Okay, so the project up to this point, um, the table of uh, output does not update itself automatically. So if you want to test this out a little bit first, the way I would do it is you want to uh, simulate or run whatever you have at the moment on the browser, input a, com a couple of comics, um, this time maybe put a couple of real comics for the moment. So I'm going to run it in the browser. I'm going to create an account. I'm going to save a couple of comics because then what I want to do is set up automatically refreshing or reloading or redrawing the table, that table of what I've saved so far. Sign up with an account. I'm going to log in. <coughs> Save comic. Superman number one, 1938, uh, I think. Um, all of this uh, optional information for the moment, we won't be able to see it just yet, so you can skip it. DC Comics. Okay, so I'm going to save one. Then I'm going to uh, save another one. Any that I save at the moment, they don't appear yet under View Comics. After I save at least one and I restart the app, that's when I see the updated table. So when I save at least one, and then I try to view that table, there would be one item in the table. But the table does not reload itself, refresh itself. So what we need to do is, in our JavaScript, let's see here, index.js. Near the beginning, we've got line 45, function show comics prep. That's the function that displays the latest version of the table. So my idea is whenever we save a comic, it might be a good idea to refresh the table to display what comics have been saved recently. So that function, I'm going to copy it. We're going to add it to a couple of places. We've got our whole save comic function. We've got db.put. Ultimately, we've got this in two places. One at about line 294. This is one of the places where we where we put the comic. Well, after putting, after saving a comic, that would be a good idea to have function show comics prep. Function show comics prep prepares the data, ultimately displays the data. So put a comic, show the results. This is part of the if else. Specifically here, if there was a failure, if something happened in that there was a duplicate and such. The other place, a little bit further down, we had the the else of db of the first db dot put. We had that else where we had console log success. Reset the form display the animation that said comic saved. So anywhere here it would also make sense to put it. I'll, I'll put it after the, um, the pop-up function show comics prep. So here you can note after a comic is saved, 
redraw the table to show it on screen. Yes. Just a little bit higher. The first place was right over here at about uh, 294, where we had our other db.put from the other if else about trying to save the comic. There's two spots very near here about db.put. It might be inside. I remember we've got also case. Look for where it's got case. So the first one is case 409, I think. Yes. And the second one is a little bit lower. Question? That happens on mine sometimes, too. And what I have to do is restart Visual Studio. And then the second time, it's ease of the device. So let's see if this worked. Um, in those two spots, we add function show comics prep so that it redraws the table after successfully saving a comic. Now, on mine, if you were using my code, so early on here, on line 333 in my case, I had success.rows2 doc title. I was getting an error saying cannot read property doc of undefined. In my case, I was trying to show in the console the third comic saved, 0, 1, 2. So whenever there's a mistake in JavaScript, it shuts down the whole app, basically. So in my case, I did not have three comics saved yet. And it was trying to display in my console data for my third comic. So in my case, I just put that back to 0. I do have a 0 with comic, at least, that I can work with. And then the project worked fine. So I forgot that I was testing it last time with you know five comics saved therefore show me the data of the fourth comic I don't have four comics yet so I get an error putting it on row zero uh, I have a zero with comic that should then stop that error that was at about line 333 so just to confirm I've saved some comics I go to view comics and I'm starting to get the, uh, the comic data there. If I save another comic, <coughs> Spider Man number one, 1963, save that. I get the feedback that says comic saved, but if I go to view comic, I also see it displayed here. That was the point of putting the function prep in those two places. So, af 
after properly after saving a comic right there after after db.put refresh the table to display the comics the latest comic The, uh, the other thing uh, we'll cover here is, okay, if I've got these comics, this database where I've saved stuff, uh, perhaps at some point the user wants to start over, and uh, that's, what we'll, that's what we'll cover here. We want to uh, let the user start over. So ultimately we will set it up that we will be able to edit individual comics and delete individual comics but at the moment here we'll set it up so that we delete the whole comic database to start over so this is going to require a couple of things like we've seen before something visual for the user and then something internal in the JavaScript so I want to add a button into our app that says delete my collection you know delete everything to start over so we're going to add a button in the HTML and then we're going to add the JavaScript that reacts to that button to delete the database. Let's go over to index HTML. And we'll go back to our PG <laughs> options. We'll go back to PG options screen. PG options line 104 or so has uh, two items there in the article so far a contact us button and a log out button well within here I also want to have a button to uh, delete the database to delete the collection so here it's going to be easy to add the the next button a tag delete collection this is an href to nowhere so it's got the pound sign it's going to behave like a button data roll button Data icon. We've got a uh, an icon that represents deletion. I think it's just called delete. Let me double check that. We don't have a trash can icon. That would be nice. We'd have to design our own. Um, so I think delete, delete will be fine. And then an ID so that we can then reference it via the the jQuery. So uh, ID BTN delete collection. So in the options screen, there's a few options for the user. One of them is contact, one of them is logout, one of them is delete collection. So we've seen this before, pretty basic. This is jQuery mobile, data roll button, etc., etc. We've got a button. The way this will work then is save your HTML and we'll go back to the JS file. We need to create an object representing that button then an uh, event listener, and then a function that ultimately does it. So we've done those before as well. So back to index.js. We'll go over to our spot where we've got all of our variables that we've been creating. Let's see, so that's at about line 180. So we've got L form save comic, L div show comics table. This is all related to pouch area, so I'll keep putting it in there. 
This will be L BTN delete collection equal to quotes pound BTN delete collection. Note button to delete pouch. Actually, it's going to do multiple things. It's going to delete what is currently in the pouch database and reinitialize the database so that we can start to save data again. So now we've got a jQuery based variable or object so that we can create an event listener. This is where we'll have the uh, onClick method. So back to where we've got our, um, let's see, down at the bottom, where we've got our 380, where we've got our other event listeners. We need to reference that button or that object we just created, L BTN delete collection dot on click. And some function that we are going to invent ourselves in a moment. So function delete collection. We've got an event listener. We're waiting for a click. That's our event. We're listening for it. Then we then run the, the function delete function, which we will create in a moment based on the object of JavaScript we created. So do you see we've done this several times. We have some sort of HTML element, which then we create a JavaScript representation of an object. And then we have some event handler, a click, a submit, etc. After a click, after a submit, we, we run a function. So our function is going to be delete collection. I'm going to back up. Um, of here after our function show comics table well we're going to define function fn delete collection this is and function delete collection and here we can note function to delete everything in pouch and reinitialize the DB, the database. The command is uh, is super simple db dot destroy that's it it deletes the database but that's too easy isn't it that's too powerful too scary don't we want to give the user a little bit of warning hey you're about to delete this because right now if we just put db dot destroy great your database is gone no warning no feedback no confirmation so just like other instances where we've had to uh, check with the user, we need to have some sort of system to double check, are you sure? Uh, we had a system of are you sure for something else. Anyone remember else where else the app asks are you sure? Log out. Log out, yes. 
So we're going to need something very similar to that. But we're going to make it double. We're going to say, are you sure? And then we're going to say, are you sure you're sure? Because if they, if they don't notice that pop up the first time and they say, yes, I'm sure, whoops, what did I do? Database is gone. And unless we program a way of undo, there is no undo. Undo would be duplicating the whole database and then bringing it back. So we're going to have a double confirmation. Are you sure you want to delete? And the second time, are you sure you're sure you want to delete? You're sure. And then we'll delete it for real. So inside of the function, we'll start off with a switch. This is our first level. We can do two if statements. We can do two switch statements. We're going to do both for fun, because programming should be fun. We're going to ask our first question here, switch. Are you sure you want to delete, true or false? Then on the second time, we're going to ask another confirmation with if else. Are you sure you're sure? And then ultimately delete. So what's going to happen here under this switch, we can have the confirm method. Confirm pops up that asks you, are you sure? Well, whatever we tell it inside of the quotes. Our message is going to be, you are about to delete your whole collection. Confirm. So letting them know, you are about to delete your whole collection. Backslash n for a new line. That's not a slash or a forward slash, that is a backslash. And it really kills me when people say, visit my website, http colon backslash backslash www, because that's not a backslash in a web address. That's a backslash. Confirm. So on one line, it will say, you're about to delete your whole collection. New line, confirm. The confirm box automatically has an OK and a cancel built in, a true or a false. So then that means we need to deal with the cases in case of true, in case of false. Case, true, something, break, case, false, something else. Is obviously not real code. Break. And there really shouldn't be a third condition, but it's good practice to have the default condition. All of that is end of switch to ask the first time. To confirm deletion. <coughs> we'll go backwards. Default case to work with, then false, then true. True will be one more level of confirmation. But under <coughs> default, I don't assume that we're going to get a a default case. The switch, the confirmation confirm method should only have true and false. But there could be a third case that might happen, so we might as well give ourselves some console output saying um, error contact developer. very helpful message for them. Then on false, we're going to, um, nothing really needs to happen under false because they clicked cancel. So just some simple console output here. The user doesn't really need anything back from that. You could if you want, but here we're saying user canceled. Deletion. You could have it say to the user something like, thank you for not deleting. I think that's too much, but you could. 
That's the result of false. False from confirm. They clicked cancel. What comes back from canceling a confirmation is a false. Or a or clicking OK, which would be a true. The the true part. We could do another switch, or we could do an if else. We can mix and match these. Here I can note and uh, if else asking the second asking for asking for the second delete confirmation. We can obviously add more levels of this to say, are you sure, you're sure, you're sure, you're sure. Just keep putting it into more trues or ifs, else, or whatever, just to keep more levels and levels of yes or no. And ultimately, there will be then a final yes, delete it all. The way we'll do it here, we'll have another confirm. And remember, confirm gives us either true or false. If they click OK, we get a true out of confirm. If they click um, cancel, we get a false. So the first part is if, the second part is uh, uh, the second else is false, basically. So if they end up in the else section, it's once again, they, they, they canceled. They, they changed their mind, and they canceled. So nothing special has to happen here. I'm just going to put the exact same console output in the else. So they could have changed their mind on the very first confirmation, right here. They could have changed their mind on the second confirmation, which we'll write in a moment, right there. So again, not really necessary for user feedback. They just click Cancel. But for us in the console, we can see, a, see results. For the second if, it's going to be another confirm. Again, with us being so used to or perhaps desensitized of so many things popping up, we sometimes just click OK without really noticing. Well, if my first message is a bit long, two lines, and it perhaps catches their attention, the second time around with a shorter message, because it looks different than the first message, which is a little longer, hopefully that stops them enough to read it to say, what, am I sure of what? What am I doing? Cancel. By this time, OK, you've already confirmed twice. Your data's gone. So the result of a person clicking OK on confirm is true. So we hit if true, it got deleted. OK, they want to delete it. So what we'll do here is uh, a little console output that will say first that the user confirmed that. So we will say console log, yes, user wishes to delete the database. <clears throat> but what really deletes the database is then db.destroy. Uh, again, very simple command. It does it right away. That has no built-in confirmations or anything. That's why we had to layer ourselves or protect ourselves or the user. We have to protect the user from themselves with a couple of confirmations. DB destroy. This would silently behind the scenes delete the database. Nothing to say about our table or anything else. So as with most pouch commands, there's the failure or success that we always have to deal with. So final step, db is deleted.
destroy itself has failure and success. We should do some cleanup behind the scenes after successfully destroying. Reinitialize the database. Reinitialize that table. Let the user know. So. Inside of db destroy, we have the callback function syntax. As we've seen over and over, failure and success. Every time we've had this sort of syntax or this idiom, uh, function, failure, success, what usually has followed it? Every time we've dealt with pouch stuff, what follows? We've done the if-else several times, right? If failure, or else success. So we do it again here. Inside of these curly braces, I'm going to break those curly braces. And uh, db destroy. And then inside of the curly braces, we've done what we've done a few times before. If failure, else success. So we've done that several times. Whenever we have db.something, db.put, db.get, db.alldocs, <coughs> db.destroy, we always have some failure or success callback function. And then an if else to deal with in a failure or success. If there's a failure, we want to have some console output for ourselves to troubleshoot it. We want to have a pop-up for the user telling them there was some sort of error, or else there was a success. We can have some success console output, and then more importantly, reinitialize the database and reinitialize the table. So under the failure, console log, to ourselves, we'll say error in deleting database. And what was that failure? Conversely, for success, success deleting database. with the success object. So we were trying to destroy the database. There's either going to be a failure, which really shouldn't. We, we have a database always to work with at this point. We should not get a failure out of it. Maybe if we misspell something. Uh, but it's really hard to, to misspell the name of our database, db. Or there's going to be a success, which is else. Else is a success, so little console output. To the user under failure, I also want to let them know that is a failure that the user should know something happened here. But hopefully uh, we catch it in debugging, in, in beta testing before it gets out to the user. But I'll have an alert here. A, a pop-up box for the user. Um, we can say error new line contact developer contact the developer
And then under else, we have a function that initializes the database. The very first time we launch the app, it creates a blank, empty database. Well, we need to reinitialize the database. We have a function that does that. Anyone remember what it might be called? To initDB. We named it very obviously, initDB. Initialize the database so that we can start with a new database. If a person tries to then go to save a comic, there's no database to save a comic to, so they'll get weird errors. Therefore, let's reinitialize the database. Brand new database, ready to be used since we just deleted one. Reinitialize the database to start saving data again. And because internally, you know, the internals don't talk to the externals automatically. Inside the database stuff, that's not exactly talking to the visuals of the of the app. So we need to redraw that table. We need to clean out everything in that table to show that there's nothing in the table. So we got our we have our function show comic prep. That's our function that prepares the table to be shown. Right now there's zero things in the database. So the table should be redrawn to show there's nothing in the in the in the database on screen redraw the table to be empty whenever we add new data to the table or change data we will need to redraw the table so when we do that on Tuesday editing the data oops I misspelled Superman or adding to the data, I didn't put publisher. We would need to redraw the table. Or maybe I don't actually want this comic in my collection. I don't have Superman number two. I have Superman number number one only. So I want to delete an entry. We're going to delete an entry from the database, and then we're going to refresh the database. Or not the database, the table. We're going to refresh the table to then display one less comic. That's the point of this function, to redraw the table. I'm going to save this and run it. So I know I've got a few comics saved. If I go directly to View Comics, I should see um, I've got comics. A very popular Mickey Moose number one. And if I go over to my uh, options screen, I have delete collection. I'm going to cancel that. You are about to delete your whole collection. Confirm. Now it's off the edge of my screen here because it's a browser. But if I hit cancel, User cancel deletion, line 387. Okay, I'm going to delete collection. So I'll say OK. Are you sure? So I'm in the second level of the question. Cancel that one. Again, it shows that I've canceled. I'm going to take the plunge this time. Delete collection, click OK first time, click OK second time. Success in deleting database there. If I close that, go back to view my comics, that should have then deleted my table, but it didn't. So let's check that. 334. This console log, in my case again, for testing it on line 334, it was fine for testing a while ago. It's causing me a little issue at this time. It's just some console output, so I'm going to comment it out. 
in 334, I had this um, getting data from the database, row 0. Technically, I, I don't have any rows at all. So just for testing purposes, this console here is, is not helping me. So I would recommend to comment that out. That's in your dbl docs. Um, I'm coming, commenting out that console. I'm going to refresh it, or that is rerun it. Okay, so database is empty, table is empty. I'm going to save a comic again, just gibberish for the moment. Comic save, view comic. I've got a comic. Save another comic. Okay, so I've got a couple of comics saved. Going to go to delete collection, confirm it, confirm it. Close it, go back, view comics, empty. So that's what I'm expecting. I got a, a little error about that console output that I didn't need anymore, line 334. If yours didn't quite work, that might have been it there. So I then should be able to start saving comics again. Saving comics again. So we have the full save comics, delete the whole thing, start saving comics again. Ultimately, we will set it up so that we click that little info button. You'll get another screen that will tell you also, remember we've got year and publisher and notes. And from that screen, we will be able to edit it. I misspelled it, or I put the wrong number, or the wrong title, or something. So ultimately, this info button will give us a way to edit individual comics, or delete individual comics. And at the moment, it's everything at once. Let me test it also on my real device. 